Are you getting tired of staying at home, wearing masks when you go out? And are you anxious to go back to how things were in 2019 and before? What are you doing to decrease your chances of ending up in the ICU? There was an article in the Washington Post about a report of people in intensive care in New South Wales, Australia. And it gave a report of 101 people in the hospital, 43 in intensive care. And the person who gave the talk, Jeremy McNulty, said, all but one are vaccinated. And that became a meme, um, which was utterly unexpected and surprising. He had accidentally said vaccinated instead of unvaccinated. And um, he misspoke. Uh, and he corrected himself, but damage had already been done. Anti-vaxxers around the world flooded Facebook and Twitter and clips of McC and Mendalti's um, misstatement on Facebook and Twitter. Um, why did people do this? Well, they were people heard what they wanted to hear and didn't question it. Few people in New South Wales were vaccinated and it would have, wouldn't have been unreasonable that only pe vaccinated people ended up in the ICU. People quickly spread stuff that they considered interesting. Many people get in info from non-traditional sources and trust what they hear without checking whether it's accurate or makes sense. People share other, um, others' information that catches their attention and confirms their beliefs, whether it's true or not. What can you do about it? I found these tips on the World Health Organization's website, so I'll just go through each of them. Oh, and who shared the information with you and where did they get it from? Assess the source. Go beyond the headlines. The headlines might be provocative and sensational and try to provoke you into viewing them, but you might find that the article has something else. Identify the author. Is the author credible? Is the author a real person? Check the date. Check what it's talking about. Um, examine supporting evidence. Check the biases of the or you know the person that's writing it and whether they're trustworthy. And turn to fact checkers. Um, if we do this, or if then we can decrease the amount of misinformation that gets spread. Spread. Mis misinformation can be innocent, an innocent mistake, or it can be intended to deceive. So, um, and it has deadly consequences in the case of COVID. Uh, you can get excellent um, protection. One of my friends decided to get one Pfizer vaccine. She thought that 80% effectiveness was good enough for her. Why does she think um, and others think that they know better than immunologists? She trusts her car mechanic, dentist, doctor, and contractors, but she doesn't trust immunologists. What does 95% effective mean? A vaccinated person's risk of being infected would be 95% lower than an unvaccinated person's risk. There is still a percentage of vaccinated people who might get COVID. People are dying because of the spread of misinformation. It's up to each one of us to help stop or at least slow down the spread of COVID. So please come to table E after this talk and share ideas for combating misinformation. And that's the end of my talk. So I, but I forgot to time it. So I don't know where I'm at. Um, Hi, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy, for a fantastic talk. Um, really current and relevant stuff there. Um, super duper. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm not sure if we still have, uh, if Richard is still having issues, um, but is Alex.